Module 2, Glandular Epithelium. Some epithelial tissue is found in glands. There are two types of glands. Exocrine glands are glands that secrete substances outward through a duct. Exo means out of, so exocrine glands secrete material out to a surface using ducts. Endocrine glands are ductless glands that secrete hormones into the bloodstream. Endo means internal or within, so they secrete products directly into the bloodstream without the need for ducts. Take a closer look at some examples of epithelial tissue in the next lab. Module 2, Histology, the study of tissues. Experiment 2-1, epithelial tissues. We're going to take in this lab a good close look of different types of epithelial tissues. And you have three slides that you're going to be looking at. Um, the slide of the human lung and the stomach, as well as the human skin. And now when you get your slides prepared, ready to, to go, make sure you're getting the human skin slide that does not have hair follicles on it. And I want to, because this is our first lab with a microscope, I want to just go over a couple of important things that you need to do when you're looking at your slides. Almost all the slides in this course are going to involve us looking at the um, image under all three magnifications, low, medium, and high. And the high-powered optic you can see is very long. So one of the things you want to make sure you're doing is you want to make sure that you're not getting so close to your slide that that optic touches it. So the best way of doing that is when you put your slide underneath or onto the, onto the stage, move it all the way down, actually all the way up, and you want to do the up motion while you're looking from the side. You don't want to be looking through the optics at the top here and moving up because the, the risk then is, let me move this highest power, and you can see that there's a risk that you could move that stage up and uh, make a, a damage those optics. So be very careful whenever you're moving, especially this um, course focus upward, you want to be careful about that. So we're going to go ahead and we always begin on the lowest power and I have the first slide which is the human lung slide. Go ahead and put that under the scope and you want to again move your stage all the way up and then slowly using your course focus move downward until you can see something come into focus. You may need to adjust your so slide a bit to get to the center of what you, uh, what you want to find. And in this particular case, we're looking for web-like material, like a webbed formation of reddish material. And you're going to see two different kinds of things, um, web material around a white field or a white circle, and then very dense material around a larger white circle. For, for now, we want to focus on the webbed material that's around the white circle, and that's going to be um, simple squamous epithelium. And so at this point, we have the 40 power, and I'm going to move to that material that's around the white circle, but it's the, the webbed material. And um, again, we're looking for that, um, the white holes, and, and we want to focus on not the holes, but the webbing material around those holes. And once you've found that, go ahead and increase your power to a, a 100 power. And you, again, you always transfer this from the outside, not while you're looking through the scope. And then focus. You can use your find focus. You may need to center it a bit. And the higher the magnification, the trickier it gets to move that slide because you're focusing in so so intently and so, so uh, the magnification is so great that the slightest little movement uh, really makes a difference. So be very careful when you're moving that slide around. Now once you have that 100 magnification and in focus, go ahead and center that material and we want to move it up to 400 magnification. And center and focus. And at this point, really we're using the fine focus I want you to look at that material that is surrounding the white field, that web-like material that's surrounding the white field. That's what we're going to be focusing on right now. You want to um, take a look. You're going to see darker circles within the lighter circles. Those darker circles are nuclei, 
of these cells. These, each individual circle of lighter material is a cell, and the darker circles within that material, that's the nuclei that we're talking about. It may be kind of hard to see in this case, but there's a single layer of these cells. That single layer um, represents what simple squamous epithelium is. It, all the cells are oriented in a single layer. It may not appear like that on the slide that you have, and if so, that just means that the, the tissue itself folded on itself as they were forming this slide. But go ahead and draw an example of what you're looking at right now in your lab notebook, making a note of what you're looking at and the magnification under which you're looking. And if you can identify anything um, that you're looking at, for example, those nuclei, you want to make sure you identify that, label that in your drawing. Now we want to go um, back to 40 power magnification and take a look at that denser material around the white fields we were talking about earlier. So at 40 power, I want to move my slide over to those sections. And it may look a little convoluted. Um, the material around the white circles is convoluted and denser. And once you get that in focus, um, you want to increase the magnification to 100 power. And center that. And focus again. You may want to use your fine focus, which is that smaller knob. All right, and then once you get to the 100 power, go ahead and increase the magnification to 400 power. Again, doing that from look while looking from the outside, not while looking through the eyepiece. And use your fine focus to go ahead and get it um, clear. Once you have done that, you should be seeing um, cells that are longer, more column shaped, much larger than the ones you were looking at before. Um, those are um, those are cells, but they're a different type of cell. And you'll see within those cells, darker circles, and those, are, again, are our um, nuclei of those cells. All right, so this material is pseudostratified epithelium. Remember, pseudo means false. So it looks as if it might be stratified or more than one layer, but really this is just a single layer of columnar or column-shaped cells that look like they're stratified, but they're not. So this is pseudostratified epithelium. And um, these are, the white circle is really a, an airway within the lung. And that's what the material that, that lines the airway of the lung. What you're seeing is the, cells, the cell surface that touches that, that white area, that's the free surface of the cell. And then um, the other side of the cell is the basal surface. If you look at that free surface, you may even be able to see some cilia, which are fine little lines that are extending into the white area of the um, lung surface. And so that is um, something that you want to take a look at and then make an illustration also in your lab notebook as pseudostratified epithelium. Note the magnification. See if you can identify in your illustration um, the different parts of those cells, basal surface, free surface, the cilia, the nuclei, and uh, make note of that. And then once you've done that, we want to move on to our next slide. So always turn back to the lowest power. I'm going to remove this slide. Our next slide is the human skin slide. Now again, we want the, ones that is the one that has no hairs or follicles, just regular human skin. Put that under the clips. And let's take a look at that under 40 power magnification. You should be able to see, uh, in general, a uh, bunch of a pink, purplish pink set of material. Um, and you want to look for, in your slide sample, a wavy, purpley colored line. That's what you want to focus on. That's actually the top of the dermis material. The pink material that's above that line or below the line, depending on the orientation of your slide, but that, that pink material is the epidermis. And that's what we want to really focus on. That has uh, layers and layers of cells with keratinized cells at the top. So go ahead and, and center that purplish line and focus on that. And we want to increase magnification to 100 power and focus and find that purplish line again, center it. Okay, and once you have that, let's go ahead and move up to 400 power. Always changing those magnifications while we're looking from the side, not through that eyepiece. 
And we want to start by examining the free surface, the, the, the part that's furthest away from the wavy purplish line, uh, the cells there. And notice the shape of those cells as compared to the cells that get closer and closer to the line. So you can take a look as you once you focus in, and you may have to move your slide a bit up and down to identify those different cells. But you should see that the cells at the surface are much flatter. Um, and also notice that those cells may not even have nuclei in them. Because remember, the, as, as you get further and further away from that um, dermal material, you get cells that are filled with keratin, and those are dead cells. That's what the outer area of our skin is, keratinized cells that are actually dead skin cells. And so see if you can identify cell nuclei as you go closer and closer to that purple line. And notice that as you go further away to that free surface, you're going to see um, no nuclei inside of those. Now, now let's look at the bottom of the purplish tissue. You should see a, main, a major difference between um, the cuboidal cells and the tissue below that. That's where the basement membrane is located, the basement membrane. And you may want to refer to the diagrams in your text to help you see um, a simpler illustration of what you're looking for to kind of gain, gauge where you are in your slide. Um, but the basement membrane is, is very different to, this, um, uh, to what you might expect a basement baseline to be. It's not a line. It's not straight at all. In fact, it's very wavy. So make note of that. It's a very wiggly up and down kind of line. And um, this is what you want to draw in your lab notebook. This is stratified squamous tissue. Remember, stratified means there's layers and layers and layers of cells. So stratified squamous tissue, you want to make sure that you note again what magnification you're looking at underneath this slide as well. Okay, once you've done that, we are going to now move to our final slide in this lab. Let's remove this one. And that is the slide of the human stomach. So I'll put that under my clips here. 40 power. And I want to focus, I adjust a little bit. OK, and what you're looking for here, um, it may be a little more tricky to find because this material does not stain as well as other cell types. But we want to look for um, oblong, length, lengthened purplish material. It's going to be kind of a purple colored stain. And once you find these, these elongated pur purplish uh, structures, you want to focus on that at 100 power. And so I'm going to do that. Slide my slide to center that. And then again, we want to, once you get it centered, let's move it to 400 power. And focus that as well. All right, you want to look for a white line going up and down that elongated purple structure, the white line in the center. And so it may be hard to find that white line. Um, maybe it, it has been collapsed based on when they were pr uh, producing the slide. But look for that. And that's what you're wanting to focus on. So when you do find that line going up and down, you're going to look at the cells surrounding that white stripe. Those cells are very tall. Notice that. Um, and there is also, um, they're oriented in one cell layer in thickness. Now, um, again, if the, if the white stripe is not there, then it, you just may have tissue that's folded up again on itself. And it might be a little bit more challenging to see. But you can see here, there's one cell layer thick in this image you're looking at. Um, and this is simple columnar epithelium. Those cells are column shaped. They're very elongated and simple. They're not stratified. They're single layer all the way through. So make, it, make an illustration of that as well in your notebook, identifying this type of tissue and the magnification under which you're looking at it. And then at that point, you want to remove, you want to first turn it down to low power, remove your slide, and then clean everything up and put it away. Well, now that you have looked at some tissue under the microscope and have the two new definitions under your belt, let's discuss exocrine glands. Here are a few types of exocrine glands in the body. Though they have several shapes, all exocrine glands have a secretory portion. This area is where the cells are that secrete chemicals. All exocrine glands have a duct through which the materials are secreted. So no matter the shape of the glands, all of them have secretory portions and ducts. Exocrine glands secrete chemicals onto a surface. Some exocrine glands, like mammary glands, secrete material onto the skin surface. 
Exocrine glands can also secrete to a surface inside the body. There are some in your stomach that secrete chemicals onto the surface inside the stomach so that those chemicals can aid in digestion. There are actually three ways that exocrine glands can secrete these chemicals. Merocrine glands are exocrine glands that secrete without losing cellular material. They excrete the products via exocytosis. You learned about that type of active transport in the last module. Well, marrow means part, and only a part of the material from the inside of the cells is released. A good example of merocrine glands are sweat glands. They secrete a combination of water, salt, and other dissolved substances onto your skin. Apocrine glands are exocrine glands that have cytoplasm in their secretions. Apo means tip or apex, and apocrine glands will pinch off the tip of the epithelial cell as part of their secretion. Mammary glands are an example of apocrine glands. Holocrine glands are exocrine glands that have secretions made up of disintegrated cells. Hollow means whole, and holocrine glands have cells that will completely break open, emptying their entire or whole contents into the duct. The gland will replace those cells by mitosis. The other two types of glands do not have to do this. Sebaceous glands in the skin are types of holocrine glands. They secrete oil to help keep the skin moist. If sebaceous glands overproduce, as sometimes happens during puberty, the oils are great food for bacteria, so acne can result from these fully rich cellular secretions. Endocrine glands secrete chemicals called hormones into the blood. Remember, they do not have ducts like exocrine glands. The hormones are messenger chemicals and via the bloodstream can be taken rapidly to any point in the body. Now let's compare exocrine and endocrine glands by looking at their structures side by side. This is an illustration of cells in the pancreas, which contains both types of glands. Endocrine glands have cells that are packed closely together. That's just like epithelial tissue. Exocrine glands have cells organized into a secretory portion and a duct, but there are no ducts connected to the endocrine glands. Instead, very small blood vessels called capillaries run through the endocrine cells. The blood brings oxygen and nutrients to the cells and picks up any wastes, but it also picks up any hormone secretions those cells make. Endocrine cells secrete hormones via exocytosis. Then the blood transport those hormones to other parts of the body. Module 2 Histology, the study of tissues. Experiment 2-2, microscopic anatomy of the salivary glands. In this lab, we'll be taking a closer look at human salivary glands. Um, although we will not be able to see an entire salivary gland under the microscope, they're much too big, but we will be able to take a closer look at the ducts and the secretory portions of the salivary gland. So you will take your single slide for this lab, which is a human salivary gland slide, and we want to put it under 40 power magnification. And we're going to be looking for, this, with, on this cross-section of tissue, we're going to be looking for um, strands of tissue. Uh, they form kind of a web-like material. And focusing specifically on white circles, right, oval shapes, that are surrounded by that darker tissue. So you want to see if you can orient yourself on your, on your slide center on one of those, or a couple of those oval shaped or circular shapes that are surrounded by darker tissue and focus on that. And once you've done that, um, go ahead and increase your magnification to 100 power. Again, doing that with your eyes for looking from the side, not through the eyepiece. And focus, you may have to center it again and focus that. Okay, at this point you can begin to see more of the individual cells and their nuclei, which are stained a little bit more darkly than the, um, the cells themselves. Some of these nuclei are just gonna be packed together tightly. Other nuclei are going to be kind of lined up and they'll outline a region of the darker, of the uh, white tissue. And so um, you want to find a line of, the, of cells that are lining that white line, as well as see if you can get within the field of some of those circular 
um, openings as well. At that point, go ahead and increase your focus or your power to 400. And you will use your fine focus here. You may need to adjust to get to one of those white, white lines or the circles, the white circles, and focus on the cells surrounding those. Um, you're going to see uh, clusters of cells. The clusters of cells that are, um, are oblong and the circular regions surrounding those. The clusters are sec the secretory portions of the um, gland. The outlined white regions, those are the ducts that will send what is secreted out into the body. So go ahead and draw the duct and draw the secretory cells in your lab notebook, making sure you note the power and the, magnif the magnification that you're looking under. And at that point then, begin to scan and look for different ducts. You'll, you'll see that there may be a, um, either a single, single layer of cells or you might see a double layer of cells surrounding those ducts. And all of the cells are cuboidal, but if it's a single layer of cells, that will be simple cuboidal epithelium. Remember, simple epithelium is a single layer of cells. The um, double layer, if you find one of those, that would be the stratified cuboidal epithelium because stratified, thinking of strata, which is layers, you have more than one layer of epithelium surrounding that duct. So um, in your uh, notebook, you want to go ahead and draw both of those if you can find them. So scan through your slide, taking a look for those circle shapes that are surrounded by the cells and uh, make those illustrations in your textbook. Once you've completed that, go ahead and clean everything up and put it away.